Well, hello, and thanks for joining us for another stay-at-home edition of Mid-American Gardener. I'm your host, Tanisha Spain, and we've got two of our panelists on the line today to help answer some of your questions. So let's have them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their specialty. And tonight, you've got the two Jennifers on the line, uh, Jen Nelson, we'll call her Jen to make things easier, easier, and Jennifer Fishburn. So Jennifer, uh, why don't you uh, start, introduce yourself, and tell us a little bit about your passion and your specialty in the garden. Well, hello. Uh, I am a horticulture educator with the University of Illinois Extension, and I cover Logan, Menard, and Sagamon counties. So uh, really, I can answer just about any questions, although I think my passions are vegetable gardening um, and some flower gardening and herb gardening are what I, what I enjoy growing. Okay, and we're right in the middle of that. So you'll have some good questions to answer later. Okay, Jen Nelson, tell us a little about, about yourself. I am Jen Nelson, I'm a horticulturalist. You can find me online at groundedandgrowing.com. And I'm kind of a generalist like Jennifer and my favorite things are houseplants, vegetable gardening, a little bit of everything. But those are my, if I had to pick two things, that's what I'd pick. Okay. Well, thank you ladies both for being here tonight. Um, okay. So Jennifer Fishburn, we'll start with you with some show and tells. Uh, you've got some photos to share. Yes. So it should be seen on the screen here shortly, a picture of some eggs that are on my squash plants. Um, so what I have are squash bugs, um, egg case eggs that are on my squash plants. Um, these eggs you might also find on pumpkins, all types of squash and occasionally on cucumbers. Uh, these are laid by a gray bug, which is called a squash bug. Uh, they overwinter as an adult and they'll lay these eggs uh, in June, July timeframe. So what I want viewers to know here is if you see these on your plants now, usually on the underside of the leaves in the V of of the vein, between the veins there is where you'll find them. If you can scrape those off or squish those egg cases. Tonight I went out and scraped those off into a bucket of soapy water. Um, that'll prevent the eggs from hatching into nymphs and then um, getting it becoming adults. Uh, what those squash bugs will do is they will suck the sap from the leaves and if they're numerous in number, they can, they can cause damage and eventual death to the plant. Um, in small numbers, they're, they're usually not a problem, but they are prolific. They will continue to lay eggs all summer long. So if you can get out, um, I go out twice a week and squash those eggs or remove them from the plant, scrape them off like with a butter knife. If you don't wanna use your fingernail, you could scrape them off the plants. Okay, two questions came to mind as, as a relatively new gardener. One, um, do you have to, is there a spray that you can use or is it just best to, to flick them off? Is there a way that you can treat for them? So it's, it's, you can treat for them, but early on, so at this, at this time in the season, it's easy to go out and pick and remove those eggs. That's the best measure to do. Uh, the other thing is lay a board out at night or so in, at night in the garden, those adults will go and hide underneath of it. And then early first thing in the morning, go out, flip the board over and you can squish the adults. That's the best way to do it. Um, the adults, when they become the final stage are very difficult to treat with insecticides, but there are insecticides labeled for control of, of the younger, the nymph stages that you could treat. But if you can hand remove, go out for a few minutes every night and inspect the plants, that's the, that's the best way to do it. Okay. And then do they only prefer uh, fruits or vegetables in the squash family? For example, you know, watermelon has larger leaves like that. Would, would they be on a watermelon leaf? Uh, you're most likely going to find them on squash and pumpkins, occasionally on cucumbers. I have also um, had them in my garden late season on other vegetables, but they really like the squash plants. That's where they get their name squash bug. Um, and then in the fall, just make sure you remove debris from your garden and that'll prevent those, hopefully prevent those adults from overwintering. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, Jen Nelson, you've got a an issue that you're battling as well. <laughs> how I spent my day today. Uh, we had our air conditioning go out on Saturday morning, which wasn't too big of a deal on Saturday. But as we've gone 
couple days into this and it's gotten more and more humid and nasty out, we're kind of dying. I fell asleep with a cold pack from the cooler on my head last night, but <laughs> thankfully they came out and looked at it and we discovered that we had a mouse get into our AC unit outside. And ironically enough, they were repairing the very same destruction two weeks ago. And this was just something else they had also been into that hadn't quite broken yet. So I hope that there's no more left to break because this is about $400 in right now. Um, so, but the very guys, expensive very, mouse. Yes. yes <laughs> not earned his keep at all. <laughs> I gotta go spend more money. The guy that came out and fixed it had some suggestions based on other things he's seen. Uh, one thing he said was to try to put something, uh, like, a my, uh, plastic owl here. Hmm? He said, try to put that out near the unit. Um, to uh, scare mice away. Uh, so we found this guy out shopping this afternoon and he also said rubber snakes and we did, we weren't successful at finding those in the store, but I can tell you, you can get a 12 pack on Amazon for $14.99 and they'll be here on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was a product that he was recommending and uh, we've shared some of this company's products before, Bonide, and this was one, it's coming up backwards, of course, but it's called Repels All, and uh, it is like a liquid fence, if anyone's used liquid fence, it's like liquid fence on steroids, so it's got the eggs, the rotten egg smell, it's also got cloves, it's also got garlic, it's also got fish meal, it's also got meat meal, which that sounds disgusting. It's also got urea and vinegar. So I can attest that this stinks to high heaven when I put it on, but it did, once it dried, um, it didn't smell at all. So we're gonna see if this can evict the mice from my air conditioning unit, because they just seem to love it there. And we talk about uh, insects a lot on the show, but uh, never the, the other critters that like to get into things. They are on my least of on my list of least um, loved things in my garden. I really dislike them greatly. <laughs> Last week, I had a great big, and I mean huge groundhog laying on top of my pallet of lettuce, literally just having the best time. And my kids were trying to scare him off. My husband was trying to scare him, and he it was just like no, this is worth the risk. <laughs> and they got very close and it ended up scurrying off, but uh, he was not leaving that salad bar very well, I, easily. I've seen some like that in, in, in my day too. There was one I recall that was running and you could hear its belly slapping on, on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> they don't miss many meals. So, okay. Thank you, Jen. All right. Back to you, Jennifer. You've got another show and tell to talk about. I do. So I went out to the garden this evening and this is what my lettuce plant looks like at the current moment. You can see it's a bit bigger than what it should be, uh, much, much taller. And what it is doing is it is bolting. So that means that it will soon, probably within a week or so, um, put off flowers that will obviously produce seeds. So what this is telling me is this plant is no longer a desirable plant that I would want to eat. It's probably going to be, and it is, bitter tasting. Uh, and this is due to the fact, so a couple different reasons. One, one reason it does it is, is dry conditions, which we did have up until recently, very, very dry conditions. And the other is extreme heat. Uh, lettuce is a plant that's a cool season plant, so uh, it doesn't like these hot conditions. What I can do now is remove the plants or leave them be um, from the garden. And then in the fall, I can plant another crop. So I'll have another cool crop, another lettuce crop, spinach crop, all those nice cool greens in the fall. Um, one thing I did though this spring is I planted some lettuce in a salad table and moved it up close to the shade of the house a couple of weeks ago. And that lettuce has not bolted yet. And the mm -hmm. reason there is that's, a consistent moisture more so that I water it. And then also because it has a little bit cooler temperatures, it will eventually bolt, but it'll be a little bit slower in doing so. So if your lettuce is starting to do this, that's why. 
and there's no way to stop it. You can't pinch it off or yeah. once it, once that process starts, there's no going back. Yeah. And once the process begins, the plan is done for the season. Okay. And uh, that cool. Oh, go ahead, Jen. Oh, I'm sorry. And hey, Jennifer, did you have any problems? I never harvested any of my lettuce. It all bolted before it even turned hot. And I, what I was looking up suggested maybe we had too much moisture. So that was like over the line and into like a stress category. Did you it could any? be, but um, no, not in the garden or in my, in the salad tables, the planter box, the boxes that I planted in. Uh, we've been picking lettuce and those for about two months now. Yeah, my salad table, it looked beautiful. And then all of a sudden I'm like, what is, oh my gosh, I, <laughs> yeah, we hadn't had any hot weather. Just had I got really lucky this year with lettuce. All of ours is, I mean, it's really, really pretty. Came in really full. Um, and I didn't do anything extra special to it, but we had a really good lettuce. And the spinach didn't do as well. Um, the spinach quit on me very early. It, I mean, it bolted probably three weeks ago, um, but the spin the lettuce is still going strong. So interesting. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Now we've got, oh, I have a question that I want to ask. So uh, I got a rose bush for Mother's Day and I was very excited. I got two actually. And so I uh, put them in the ground and I saw these little blooms coming and I'm like, great, it's about to happen. Um, but they did not bloom the color that they said they were going to. So you can see here that the picture's not great, but the tag on the ground is what I bought and the roses there is what I got. So question for the ladies is, is there ever a time that um, a rose doesn't bloom this, the color that it's supposed to, you know, for a reason? Or is this just a case of someone putting the wrong tag on my rose bush? What do you guys think? Hmm. Well, it's very likely that it was mistagged um, because you said you planted it this spring. If you had told me that you planted it last year in the spring and then it, this is the color you got this year, I would tell you since it's a hybrid tea that it's reverted to its root stock. Um, that is probably not the case. My suggestion would be to, um, if you can, email, contact the company and ask them if they know what it is or ask them if they might offer replacement. Okay. Jen, yeah. did you have anything to add? I was going to put my money on mislabeling as well. Um, generally, too, if it was the rootstock, I don't think the rootstock flowers would look that attractive. That's usually not That's why it's true. for rootstock. Okay. Uh, and I had a I had a rose once that was starting to do some funky genetic things, and it was on the individual bloom, like it was half one color and half another. Oh color. wow, That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was wondering because I I don't know a whole lot about it, but I know people say sometimes if you like hybrids um, mm -hmm. that can get a little screwy sometimes, you know, you just never quite know what you're going to get maybe. And so I didn't know yeah. if that was an option. It sometimes is. And sometimes it'll be like one branch. Um, mm -hmm. Neat. Um, All right. So we've got some questions that folks sent in. Uh, let's see. DJ, we'll start with 942. Um, this came in from Claudia and it reads, I have two sunburst locust trees. The last two springs, they have heaped lots and lots of trashy seeds all over the lawn and deck. Any suggestions? So let's see the pictures and have you ladies see if we can give them some good advice here. So sunburst locust tree. Uh, they don't like the droppings, the seeds. <laughs> a, sun, a sunburst locust is actually a nice selection of a honey locust. It'll grow about 35 to 40, uh, 50 feet tall, and it has yellow leaves. That's how it gets its name, sunburst. Uh, this is a male form, so it will still flower. Uh, there are male honey locusts, there are females, and then there are some that have both male and female. And this one is a male selection. Uh, but it will still flower. So I believe what she's seen is those male flowers, once they've done blooming, they fall into the ground and they create that quote mess. Um, with trees and shrubs, most generally you're always going to have some kind of leaf litter, some kind of flower litter, some kind of fruit litter. Um, this is just something that she will either probably have to continue to tolerate or um, pick a different selection for her yard. But this is a good tree for dry conditions, wet conditions, clay type soils. It's pretty versatile. 
uh, tree. So it is a good selection with, with very few problems unless the tree becomes stressed. Is there any uh, word on why perhaps she says it's doing, you know, giving more in recent years or there's more litter? Sometimes a, a tree will produce more flowers uh, when it's under had some type of a stress situation. So if you had a year with a severe drought, it may produce more flowers the next year, possibly. Um, but usually a tree is reacting um, a year later to, to mm. some kind of condition. So that, that may be why. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's go to 954 nest ID. Uh, we found this nest on the brick of our home and wondered if you know what it is. Thanks for your time. Look forward to the show each week. Carrie. So let's see her pictures and see what we have here. Yeah, that That's my question. And that was a, a praying mantis egg case. That was a very good thing to have in the garden. And I find them on also, um, I have found them on patio furniture. Um, they're very common on Christmas trees too. If people uh, bring cut Christmas trees in the house, you should kind of keep an eye out for these sort of things on the on the stems because you really don't want those in the house in the warm house in December because they'll hatch. <laughs> I think we talked about that uh, <laughs> right around Christmas time when we were in the studio because I was uh, spider mites. Someone had mentioned the spider mites can come in too, and I was horrified. <laughs> scared me to death. So I will never forget that. So if you happen upon one of these, um, let's say in this instance, um, how do you move it to a safe place if you have to? Like if you brought it in on a Christmas tree or something like that, is there a certain way that you're supposed to handle it or, or put it somewhere? If it, was, if it was in December, I would just make sure it stays cold. I would cut that branch out and okay. really put it out in my garden. Okay. Or, Good and cold till the spring. But this one that is on a brick, yeah. should they leave it or try to maybe transport it somewhere? Leave it. Leave it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's go to uh, question 959. It's a plant ID question, and we'll just, this one can be up for grabs. Uh, what is this? And uh, let's see. And care, how do you care for it over winter? I think it's a succulent. So Christine sent that in. Let's see what we got here. Ooh. So I'm guessing it's that spotted sort of plant in the sort of in the foreground there. And that is silver squill. It's kind of like a succulent. It has succulent leaves and it has a tiny white flower. It's actually related to hyacinth. Uh, it's from Africa, but it's not a succulent and it's very poisonous. So don't let kids and pets chew on it. But mm. it's, it's super easy to grow, though. I had one for, I managed to kill it, but it took several years <laughs> um, of neglect. But it is one that would, um, it grows really readily. And you can just, you see like those little bulb looking things that mm -hmm. would kind of break that apart and put it in new pots so you could share it with friends or whatever. But um, definitely a cool plant, but, uh, and kind of behaves like a succulent, but it's not considered a succulent. Okay. All right, uh, Jennifer Fishburn, you had something about uh, Japanese beetles? I was just going to mention if, if, uh, to viewers that at least in central Illinois, the Japanese beetles are here. They've been here uh, for over a little over a week now, at least that I have, have noticed. And again, kind of along with those squash bugs, if you can just be a, a gardener that goes out and visits your garden every afternoon or evening, um, hand picking them off works really well, putting them in, you know, knocking them off into soapy water is an easy way to get rid of them. Uh, don't let them go for several days because they'll invite all their friends to dine with them. If you can keep them knocked down at the very beginning, usually you'll have less of a problem and, and they can vary as far as you may not see any all season to different, you know, areas may have lots of them. So it's hard to predict who's going to have more or less. Um, but they they are just a very big nuisance pest and they're on my blackberries and they'll start at the top of the plant and work their way down. So going out every night and just hand picking them off. So um, a lot of people have those bags yeah. <laughs> and I Jennifer's Jen shaking her head. So the joke is you let your neighbor get one. <laughs> 
right? So that they all go over there um, because you're just attracting them and bringing them to your space. So if you've got a lot, like let's say handpicking is not an option and the bag is a bad idea. Are there any, any other tips that you guys have for people who maybe, you know, maybe get them really bad? Well, we recommend on uh, trees that you just leave them be, be, so to speak. So if you had a tall linden tree that's 30 feet tall, obviously you're not going to go out and hand pick them off. On my blackberries, that's a little bit different. On on your shade and ornamental trees, we recommend that you, you just not worry about it. They're going to skeletonize the leaves. It's not going to look pretty, but it's not going to kill the tree. Um, but on some of our smaller ornamentals, fruits or vegetable plants, for example, um, if you can't knock them down by hand picking them off, there are insecticides that you could use. Again, we just recommend that you do that um, when the pollinating insects aren't present. So later in the evening. Okay. Speaking of insects, I don't know if either one of you have milkweed um, near, your, near your homes. Um, I have some and I'm thinking about uh, letting the kids do bringing them inside and hatching a butterfly and, and letting the whole thing happen. Um, a friend of mine gave the kids a cage today to use to do the process. And so um, have either one of you had experience with this? I've never brought them inside, but I've seen it. it. I've seen, um, I've known some master gardeners that got really, really into it and had like big aquarium setups with all the Christmas mm -hmm. So it's definitely a thing. And you might look into tagging the butterflies that come out um, towards the end of the That's a project through K-State. And uh, if you sign up with them, they'll send you a sheet of stickers. And it, you do it in like late in the season, like August, September, when the migration's starting and you put these little tiny stickers on their wing. And if they make it all the way to Mexico, they have researchers that look for the numbered butterflies and you'll get a thing in the mail that says your butterfly made it. Oh, that's awesome. Jennifer, have you ever, uh, have you ever? I, have not. I do have a friend that does it and does it successfully and a lot of volunteers that do that. Mm -hmm. um, I just prefer to go out to the garden and watch the process, but mm -hmm. do make sure whether you're uh, hand rearing or rearing them in the garden or having them raised in the garden that you have a ample food supply. Uh, several years ago, we were, we had a, a group of little monarch larvae out in front of our building and they literally ate every leaf off the plant. So a volunteer and I took them home and put them on milkweeds that we had at home. So, oh, wow. They, 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 can't, eat the, they're, they're, they can't eat themselves out of house, house and home, so to speak. So make sure they have a good food supply. I've heard that, but now hearing it twice really kind of drives the point home. Um, anything else, Jen, we'll start with you. Any trends that you're seeing in the garden, in your garden this year, anything? that you've harvested yet or um with the rain and the heat any anything that you're uh, seeing that's out of the norm i noticed that the heat just completely toasted my peas just as we were starting to harvest them and enjoy them i just looked up today i'm like oh they're brown they're done time to move something else we've been way involved with uh seeding our backyard and against uh, most people wouldn't recommend seeding at this time of year but we've got uh, the ability to water it. So that, that's been our project. That's what we're focused on. And we've got tiny grass growing, so it's working. As okay. long as you can get the water on it, it will work. All right, Jennifer, what about you? I've just been pleased to be able to plant a vegetable, big vegetable garden this year that I did get fully strawed and um, I can go out and monitor every evening and pay a little bit better attention to. So I'm hoping to have a squash bug free garden this year. That's my <laughs> <goal>. <laughs> um, with so many people taking on gardening for the first time this year uh, due to COVID and everybody just being home. Are you seeing a lot of calls into the extension offices with people asking questions or running into issues? There definitely is an increased um, interest and we certainly would encourage anyone that has questions to contact their local extension office. We'd be happy to answer those questions and we can usually do that pretty quickly. Um, but yes, there is a real increased interest and, you know, I, I just hope people don't get frustrated. I hope they continue to carry on um, because gardening is never easy, especially when it's a hundred degrees outside and not raining. <laughs> so we wish everybody luck with that, with our garden. That is seasons. true. And you know what? You're going to kill a few things, right? Like 
you have to get past that part because I think a lot of people get stuck on that first failure and then they're just ready to throw in the towel. And it's like, no, no, there are people out there like you guys, I'm sure you still have follies every once in a while. Like it happens to everybody. All the time. Yeah. I don't, it's not that I don't kill any. Oh, she froze. Oh, okay. Well, we lost her. Dang it. Well, I'm sure she was going to tell you that she kills stuff too, just like the rest of us. We so. all do. We all do. Just, <laughs> we all do. Uh, do, a little, do a little bit of homework before you buy those plants is usually what we forget to do. And um, that's where we make those mistakes. Wrong plant, wrong location, um, over water, underwater, those kinds of things. Um, but it's easy to fix. You just need to reach out to the right people or, or do a little bit of homework ahead of time. Right. Okay. Well, thank both of you ladies so much uh, for your time and talents this evening. We really appreciate it. And thank you so much for joining. We hope you learned something new today and something you were able to take out to the garden. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Good night. Bye.